A lot of little churches come to me. Amen. Do not hinder them because the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So I just want you to point your hands forward, but it's Put your hands forward to these children. Just pronounce your blessings over them. Lord, we thank you today that as your children, Lord, we have the opportunity to share the secrets and the mysteries of the kingdom of God with these our children. We pray that as we share, Lord God, we pray that your word will take root in their hearts, God, and that you will send for these children as young apostles, those who are sent for you to accomplish your will here on the earth. And I thank you for the teachers who are going to do that job. I pray that you would anoint me with the power of your Holy Spirit now. I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you will fill them with wisdom so that they can impart the truths of the mysteries of the kingdom of God to these children. Anoint these children. May, they, may the word that you sow in their hearts grow up and may it produce much fruit. May they change the world for you. Thank you for the parents who sent them. Thank you for the guardians who came. We pronounce your blessings over the, all these children, we pray. In Jesus' name, with thanksgiving. And the church saying, Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Well, all, all of you guys go on. Praise the Lord. the Lord. Thank you so very much, teachers, for coming. Thank you, volunteers, for taking care of these. Yes. So now we are all of you to thank you very much for coming. God bless you. <laughs> Amen. Good to see you guys. Hello. Hey, Hello. Toby. Good. Good, good. To see you. All right. Thank you. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. All right, there goes half of the church, right? <laughs> Amen, praise the Lord. Well, I'm so happy that you are here today with me. Um, I thank the Lord that we are together. I am, last week when I shared with you, with you about Thanksgiving, um, I remind you though that for me, as I want coming all the way from Ontario and driving into here, driving into Castlegar just a year ago, not knowing you guys, and not knowing what I was coming into, well, I say to the Lord every, every time I step on those stairs, they say, thank you, Lord. Amen. I thank the Lord for you. I thank the Lord for this opportunity to share the word of God with you. And it's such a wonderful privilege that I have to be able to share the mysteries concerning the secrets of the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let me say good morning to those who are joining us now online. We are about five minutes early, but we are glad that you've taken the time to be with us. So all of you who are here at Kennard this morning, all of you are here from Castlegar, just to let you know that there's so many people who are watching us. We, we didn't even know how many people are watching us until we went home and found out that there are quite a few people who are following with us. Amen. And joining with our, joining with our services every morning. So we say good morning and thank you for joining with us. Well, today um, I'm going to continue our teachings concerning living in the spirit. And we are about when down this series now. We've gone, we've gone to this section of the text where we're going to consider, uh, we're going to consider looking. <laughs> at being gifted. All right. And this morning we're going to, I'm going to use as my title, all gifted by the spirit. Amen. All gifted by the spirit. I'm going to use as my text 1 Corinthians chapter 12, reading the verses 4, 5, and 6. So if you have your Bibles, or if it is going to be up here, boom. Wow. 1 Corinthians 12, 4, 5, and 6. Listen to the word of God. The Apostle Paul read in the church in Corinth. He says, there are different kinds of of gifts, but the same spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of workings, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. Amen. This is the reading of the word of the Lord. Amen. We pray today, Lord, that you will be with us. Speak to our hearts. Challenge us. Cause us to grow. Cause us to mature in you. 
Holy Spirit, take full charge. Open up our ears and our hearts that we may hear the word of God. Silence the noises that are around us that would distract us. And so together as we hear, may we not just be mere hearers, but we, may we also be doers of the word. This is our pray today. In Jesus' name with thanksgiving we pray and the church say, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. As we look at this text before us this morning in 1 Corinthians, all of us who are here who are church, good church people who have grown up in churches and some of you who may just be casual Bible readers understand that here we have this text that deals with giftedness in the spirit. As we are talking today about living in the spirit, we, we've already gone through um, the effects of the spirit in our lives and how he changes us and how he empowers us, fills us with strength. He gives us, he gives us power to share the testimony that how he has blessed us and how he's changed our lives, etc., etc. We talk about the fruit of the spirit, how the fruit manifests itself in our lives and, and so um, changes our character when we live as people who are living in the presence of the Lord. And then we come to this question of fruit. I'm sorry, gift. In order for me to do a better job at this and not to do a botch up job, not to do a, a real terrible job, the question that we have to ask ourselves is, what's the purpose for writing 1 Corinthians? What's the purpose for writing 1 Corinthians? I'm going to submit to you that there are two reasons why Paul is writing 1 Corinthians. First of all, he's writing because there are a matter of quarrels going on in the congregation. The first thing, the reason, one of the first reasons why he's writing is because of quarrels. And look at the text in 1 Corinthians 1 and verse 11. First Corinthians 1 and verse 11. Here the Apostle Paul says, My brothers and sisters, some from Chloe's household have informed me that there are quarrels among you. In other words, the Apostle Paul got this message from some people who probably worked at Chloe's house or something, like that, or who were related to her or him, whoever Chloe was. But the report is that there were quarrels in the congregation. And verse 12, the next verse on the slide tells us what they were quarreling about. He said, what I mean is that one of you says, I follow Paul. Another, I follow Apollos. Another, I follow Cephas. And still another, I follow Christ. There are quarrels in the congregation concerning leadership. Not only are there quarrels in the congregation, not only are there murmurs, not only are there discussions concerning leadership in the congregation, which is kind of normal, so to speak. But now, they have not only just stopped at quarrels, we've moved on to the place where this quarreling is causing divisions in the church. In 1 Corinthians 3, in verse 1, here Paul is saying, brothers and sisters, I could not address you as people who live by the Spirit, as, but, but as people who are still worldly, mere infants. In verse 4, he says, you are still worldly, for since there's jealousy and quarreling among you, are you not worldly? Are you not acting like mere humans? For when one says, I follow Paul, and another, I follow Paulus, Apollos, are you not mere human beings? So they're not just, they're, they're not just discussions taking place in the congregation concerning leadership, and I can understand discussions and quarrels. In fact, I don't even know if I can really understand the quarrels. I can understand the discussions about leadership. As a pastor myself, I'm happy to tell you that when I go to church, some people leave and some people come. Amen? People see me turn up and some people leave. <laughs> Amen. 
and then it turned up and some people come, amen? Yeah, but that's just the nature of leadership. And it's our prerogative, it's our right. We have a right to determine who will be our leader. And nobody's going to lead me if they're going to do a very poor job. I'm not going to follow a poor leader. So I've told my wife, there are some people who will not be my pastor, who can never be my pastor. Because they're just poor. And I'm not, I'm not going to subject myself to that level of leadership. If you're going to lead me, you have to be leading me. I've explained already to, to some of you, in leadership, there are times when you lead from out front. You've got to be ahead of the people. So you've got to be ahead of the people sometimes to lead the people. Sometimes you've got to be among the people to lead the people. You've got to be with the people, in the people, to lead the people. And there are times when you have to be above the people to lead the people. But you're not going to lead me if you're always behind me. So in any, in any congregation where there's a change of leadership or where leadership becomes a question, there will always be some, there will always be some kind of attrition. There will always be some kind of fallout. But here in this congregation, Paul is writing this church because the, 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 the discussions and the, the thoughts about leadership have fallen away to the point where they, where they become quarrels. And more than quarrels, they have divisions in the church. Some people want to follow this guy and some want to follow somebody else, etc., etc. I am of this clan, I'm of this clan. And so Paul is not writing and he's kind of rebuking them gently. He said, we really thought you were adults. We really thought we were dealing with mature Christians. But you're still children. You're still quite immature. Because instead of talking about just following Christ and being in Christ, you are really more concerned with following Peter or following Paul or following Apollos or somebody else. I really thought you were more serious than that. I really thought you were more mature than that. So he's writing then to correct some of these questions, some of these concerns. This quarrel and, and this division. Secondly, not only are there quarrels in the church, there are also questions in the church. The questions now Paul is going to turn his attention to. In the first six chapters, chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, he addresses these quarrels and these divisions. From chapter 7, verse 1, he begins to address the questions. In chapter 7, of verse 1, now, for the matters you wrote me about. Now, for the matters you wrote me about. So evidently, what we have here is that the people have sent some questions to the Apostle Paul. We want questions. Uh, we want answers on some questions. So Paul, now at chapter 7 of verse 1, you've got to follow me carefully. At chapter 7 of verse 1, Paul now says, Now, concerning those matters that you wrote about. Are you with me so far? We're not going to discuss some matters that you're troubled with that you need some answers for. First one is concerning marriage. Now about marriage. Let's, let's, let's discuss marriage. So Paul then goes into certain details about marriage. In, in chapter 7 of verse 25, he says, Now about virgins... In the congregation. Now about virgins, let's discuss them. In chapter 8 and verse 1, he says, Now about food sacrificed to, to idols, let's discuss. Since you don't know what to do, let's discuss food sacrifice to idols in, verse, in chapter 8 and verse 1. In chapter 12 of verse 1, now let's discuss about spiritual gifts since you don't know what you're doing. Since you have questions, let's discuss spiritual gifts. Chapter 12 and verse 1. In chapter 16 and verse 1, now about collections. Since you don't know what was the right way to do it, you don't know what to do. Now about co collections in chapter 16 and verse 1. Let's talk about collections. In chapter 16 and verse 12, 
Now let's talk about Apollos because you really don't know what to do with Apollos. So let me, te- let me teach you how we're going to deal with Apollos. So the next part of the text then is concerned about the questions. Now about the matters that you wrote about. Are you with me so far, church? Are you with me? Okay, good. So which brings me to today's text. You see, the Paul does not just write in a vacuum, neither are we teaching in a vacuum here. What we are doing, we are teaching in context. And what Paul is writing, Paul is writing in a context. Writing to a church that is troubled with so many different problems. Yes, still it is important to note that in chapter 1 and verse 1, the apostle Paul refers to them as the Haggai. The holy ones, the called out ones, the saints. He refers to a church that is plagued with troubles. And when you read in chapter 5, one man is sleeping with, with his father's wife. And you read another part, they're taking each other to court. They're divided about leadership. They are, they're, it's just a problematic church. Yet still, Paul refers to them as the holy ones, the called out ones, the sanctified ones. The saints, I can talk about this because he actually wrote a paper on it, took a couple of, about 32 pages, on why Paul would refer to such wicked people as the saints. Which means that there's hope for all of us, amen? Amen. As bad as we can be as a church people when we get together, as bad as we can be, somewhere in God's matrix of things, as bad as we are, as terrible as we can be to each other. In spite of all the crap we do to each other, somewhere in God's matrix, God still sees us as his called out ones. Amen? Amen. I bless you with that today. Now about spiritual gifts, Paul says, in chapter 12, I will not want you to be ignorant concerning this matter of spiritual gifts. We are not to be ignorant. We are not to be people who are uninformed concerning spiritual gifts. And now we come to our to the heart of our text in verse 4. So Paul's also by saying, therefore, in, in this in this in this text that we're looking at, there are different kinds of of gifts but the same but the same spirit distributes them there are different kinds of service but the same lord there are different kinds of working but in all of them and in everyone it is the same god at work in this verse, he's not repeating himself three times. When we read it, we may tend to think he's saying the same thing three different ways for emphasis. He's not repeating himself three times. He's not saying the same thing one, one, one way, same thing, another way, the same thing, another way. He's not doing that. He's actually making three different points. First of all, there are different kinds of gift, gifts, different kinds of service, and different kinds of workings. All of them, however, from the same source, from the same God, from the same Spirit, from the same Lord, and the same God. Now, I put this quote up there for the, for the Bible knowledge commentary because this is exactly how sometimes we can be. It says the spirit of the world seemed more influential in the Corinthian church than the spirit of God. Despite the splendidly evident gifts given by the spirit. That's a mouthful. Think about it. You see, because... <laughs> It doesn't necessarily mean that because we are gifted, that we are mature. And we're going we're to really begin to explain this a little bit more. It doesn't mean that because the church is a gifted bunch, 
necessarily that they're all doing the right thing. Because here in this church, Paul said about them, you have no need of any spiritual gift. Meaning, that's the euphemism I'm saying, you have all the gifts that you would ever need. Yet still, he refers to them as children and not as adults in their faith. So this has a lot of, this has a lot of implications for us. Let's, let's, begin to, let's begin to look at some of them. And today, what I, what I want to do, I have not, I've kind of just thrown some random things together for the Apostle Paul, and not in any sequence or not in any order. So let's, let's see. So he says that we, we don't, he doesn't want us to be uninformed concerning spiritual gifts. Because to be uninformed about spiritual gifts means that we would be operating really in ignorance. He does not want us to be like that. So he's given us some pointers that he wants us to be aware for the church. For us who are led by the Spirit, for the, us the children of God, and all of us are led by the Spirit. For us who are children of God, we are led by the Spirit. For all of us who are led by the Spirit, all of us who are part of God's household, we must understand how we fit into this thing. So let's go. I've, I've got about five points listed here, so let's go through them very quickly. We're not going to take very long today. A. Gifts are given. Spiritual gifts are given for inclusion, not isolation from the family. That's why Paul says, I thought I was talking to mature people, but I'm actually talking to children because you don't understand this. That's what Paul is saying to them. I thought I was speaking to mature people, but in fact, I am speaking to children because you do not understand that the gifts that are given to you, they do not make you so special that you're isolated from the family. They don't make you so different that you operate by yourself. You are given gifts so that you can actually fit into the body and cause the body to be healthy. The fact that you don't understand this means that you're already still a child. That's what he's saying to his congregation. He says, you don't, you are not gifted to be separate and isolated. You are gifted to be Included. Let me draw an illustration to you so you all can understand it. Just in case you miss the point of what Paul is saying here. You know about hockey, ain't it? I think some of you know about hockey. There's a fellow known as a goalie. He's specially gifted. He has a special talent. He is one of the guys that you want on your team. He is a goalie. But because he's a special guy, does not mean he plays by himself. He still plays for the team. The quarterback in football. A very special person to have on your team. You need a, a, a good quarterback. I guess you know the names of the fellas, right? Brady and Mahomes. And, you, know, you know what I mean, right? You, 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 you mean? Although he is special... Although he plays a special part in the game, he does not play by himself. He plays with the team. You know about baseball. There's a pitcher. Everybody does not pitch. There's a pitcher. As special as he is, as gifted as he is, he does not go and represent himself. He goes on and play as part of a team so goalies pitchers quarterbacks strikers wicket keepers all of these people are specially gifted people they have talents that we ourselves are not blessed with and so we want them on our team we want them on our team they don't represent themselves they represent us all they're part of the team therefore 
Paul is saying to us in this understanding is that we are specially blessed not to be different or isolated, but to be a part of the thing. Everybody say amen. amen. First Corinthians 12 over 16. Now, and if the ear shall say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. You're still a part of the body. You have special abilities. But you're still part of the body. So even though we're specially gifted, we're specially gifted to be a part of the body. Amen. Amen. Secondly, gifts are given for the common good of the church, for the building up of the church. Gifts are given for the common good, for the building up of the church. Verse 7, St. Corinthians 12 and verse 7. Is that, the right, is that even the right thing? I have 12, 7. Okay, we got to figure it out. All right, we got to figure it out. <laughs> I think I may have given the wrong one. Ah, oh, there it is. First Corinthians 12, 7. And now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit. Listen to that word, the manifestation of the Spirit. To each one, not the, the special not to the big ups in the church, not for those with pedigree, not for those with certain names, not for those who are part of the church's council, but to each one, the spirit manifests himself for the common good. That is why Brady and Mahone and those fellas lead teams to championships. They don't lead themselves to championships for the common good of the team. So everybody celebrate. A good save by a good goalie means victory for us. For us, not for him. It's for the common good of the team, for the church. So this is when Paul is struggling so much with them being so immature because even though there are a bundle of gifts in the church, we have a bundle of people in the church who are all gifted and everybody playing for themselves. We're not playing for the church. We're not playing for the team. So the struggle is for us to understand now that each person at least has one single gift, at least one single gift. And that one single gift is given to that individual to serve his team and make the team a better team. It doesn't make me a better person. It, may, it can make me a better person, but I don't play for myself. I play for all of us. All of us are playing together. And I'm doing my part. And you're doing yours. Because... It's not about the individual. So in all of this, the apostle now is moving the church forward away from thinking like individuals. Stop thinking about this thing about me. It is not about me. It is about us. Paul, that's why, that's, why, that's why the quote said earlier that it seems as though they're dominated by a spirit from the world rather than the spirit of God. Because if you're dominated by the spirit of God, if you're led by the spirit of God, you understand that all of us are in this together. You're not a star boy on your own. We are doing this together. 
So Paul's job is to navigate the church away from this individualistic type of thing to a unity, to a corporate thing. Many, 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 many months ago, you may have seen my article I wrote in the, in the Casagar News, doing me is downstairs. Go downstairs, look at it on the, on the notice board. Not now, after I finish preach. <laughs> doing me is not good Christianity. Like, there's no place in this for that. Like, literally. We don't come up to Tracy and say, okay, Tracy, well, you do you. I'm just going to do me. That sounds current and modern. That does not fit a biblical matrix. Oh, you do you. Don't worry. You do you, baby. You do you, baby. I'm just going to do me. Paul is moving us away from that. Paul is saying, no, it's not about an individual or one person. It's about all of us playing on the same team. So the manifestation, the, 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 way how the, Spirit, the way how the Spirit of God manifests himself then in the congregation is through each of us doing our part for the common good of the church. So, yes, so gifts are given for the common good of the church, for the building up of the church. And they're given to each of us, even including the immature. First Corinthians 7 and verse 7. The Apostle Paul said, I wish to all of you were as I am, but each of you has your own gift from God. One has this gift, another have that. In other words, I have mine and you have yours. Amen. I want to thank the Lord. I thank the Lord. I've been blessed with, I will tell you this, I've had the good fortune, the good, um, the good, um, the good favor of the Lord that in all the churches that I've pastored, <laughs> I've had people who were gifted in several different areas who made me look good. <laughs> oh, people say, oh, pastor, oh, we like your church. I'm saying, yeah, why do you like my church? How have you heard? Oh, you're doing such a good job. What they don't know is that my secretaries make me look good. <laughs> my secretaries are the ones doing all the work. <laughs> my musicians, like, you know, like, seriously, like, seriously, ask me. In fact, Rick, ask anybody who's viewing this thing right now on, on, the, on, on wherever they're viewing it on, online. Like, you kind of my church is getting this lovely worship. And they say, oh, possibly you like your church. I'm glad you like my church. I can't play one instrument. <laughs> but they like my church. Oh, you're so organized. Well, I am very disorganized. But my secretaries are organized. <laughs> Amen. You see, you see what I'm saying? My men's ministry is functioning, not because I'm running it, because somebody else who's gifted and called to lead men. They're called to lead men. And so I summon them up in my office and I ask, Brother Sam, Sam is, was a fireman. He was like a leader of some, I don't know. I don't know what rank or whatever he was, but he was like a leader of men. So I go, Brother Sam, are you a leader of men? He said, yes. I said, well, then you're leading my men's fellowship. <laughs> Just like that. Because he's a leader of men. And then there are people who are like really good with their cooking and things like that. And they call him up and say, so... So you're really good with this cooking and all that, ain't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, right, you're in charge of all hospitality and all that. We're just kind of like, because they're all gifted, and they're all gifted because the Lord has done it that way so that together as a team, we can be better as we serve together. So he gives us gifts. Even though, some, even though some of us might be immature. But you have yours, and I have mine. You serve, and I serve. 
Gifts are given as the Spirit sees fit. Not from me. Not from the pastor. Not from me. You don't come to me and ask me to receive a gift. But the Spirit of God, he gives his gifts as he sees fit. But in fact, chapter 12 of verse 18, chapter 12 of verse 18, but in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. It is God who does that. God is the one who gives us the body parts. He's the one who gives us, and he's the one who sets us in the body as he sees Fit. So, like, we know, we know very well, like we said before, it really does not really make a difference which function you fill as long as you fill the function that you're supposed to fill. Right, it's the difference between body parts. You got arms and you have legs. Or you have ears and you have eyes. It doesn't matter who's the eye or who's the leg or who's the arm or who's the whatever. The fact is that as an arm, you have certain specific responsibilities that you are expected to carry out. In Hebrews 2 and verse 4, Hebrews 2 and verse 4 from the NIV, it says, God also testified to it by signs, wonders, and various miracles. And by gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed according to his will. As he sees fit. I told my wife this morning, we were preparing breakfast. I remember when my former pastor was preaching and he was talking about how proud he was to be a part of the church part of the church that we were part of and so on. And there was a song and he quoted this song that we used to sing um, the song had a, had a lyric like this. I don't know if you know this lyric. It said, God sets her members each in place according to his will. Apostles, prophets, teachers all his purpose to fulfill. That's what God does. He puts us as he sees fit. Not as we see fit. As he sees fit, according to his will. And then I close on this. Finally, all gifts come from the same spirit. Like our text says in 1 Corinthians 12, 4 to 6. That's why we chose this text this morning. There are different kinds of of gifts. But the same spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service. But the same Lord. There are different kinds of working. But in all of them and in everyone. It is the same God at work. Amen. This way Paul is, this way Paul is so, 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 so uncomfortable with the state of the congregation because they think that because some people have one kind of gift that they're different from another side of people who have a different kind of gift. What Paul is making clear here, there may be different kinds of gifts. But it's from the same spirit who gives all gifts. Amen. So, let me break this down for you as, as we wrap, wrap up. I need to break it down a little bit for you as we wrap up. First of all, we know that there are different gifts. We know there are different gifts. Now, according to my reading, and I've, and I've been researching this, and I've done it with a spreadsheet so that I got my dots in a row, in about one, two, three, four, five, six. In at least six New Testament passages, 
from beginning from Romans 12 to 1 Peter 4, in six different New Testament passages, there are at least 19 gifts identified in the New Testament. From six different passages, there are at least 19 different gifts. So there are different gifts. Like that's, that's, that's easy. Prophecy, serving, teaching, encouraging, giving, leading, mercy, miracles, healing, faith, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, discernment of spirit, tongues, interpretation of tongues, apostles, helping, guiding, faith, um, evangelists, pastors, teachers, and all that. There are at least 19, I count at least 19 different gifts. And at least about six different passages. So they are, we know they're different gifts. Then there are different kinds of gifts. The Apostle Peter in 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 10 and 11. I don't know if I have that up there. In verses 10 and 11, Peter, by the wisdom of God, demonstrates at least there are at least two different kinds of gifts. According to Peter, there are speaking gifts, and then there are serving gifts. There are different kinds of gifts. They will not have the same gift. Neither does everyone have the same kind of gift. Peter notes there are serving gifts, and there are speaking gifts. And according to whichever book you may read, you may find that there may be other groups or categories that you can place a gift or a couple of gifts in. So they may be like leadership gifts. Top of the four ministry, apostles, prophets, teachers, evangelists, pastors, and so on. Those will be categorized as leadership gifts. But then there may be some other gifts that nobody at all in the church wants to claim. Like the gift of helping people and the gift of showing mercy. There are different kinds of gifts. Now, What Paul, what Paul is drilling down, he's going to drill down. He says there are different kinds of gifts. We know that. And it says, the same spirit distributes them. But there are different kinds of service. So now let's look. The gifts work differently. That's what I mean. That they work differently. Let me draw an example. Let me draw an example to you. As you look around here, everybody here has a head. Right, amen? Good. Just making sure, just want to make sure. Huh? Heads. Heads. I just want, I was just making sure, looking, I was just making sure. Down in the back, you have heads on there, right? Everybody has, you had heads over there in the back. Heads, right? You got heads. And, I'm not talking about brains, they're not heads. <laughs> right, good. Everybody has a head. Each man, each woman has a head. But each person that I look at you, I think, this is a guess now because I really can't see, but I think everybody has a kidney, at least one kidney. I think. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing about it. The kidneys do something in the body that the head doesn't do, right? Like the head protects your brain and carries your eyes and stuff like that. The head does a certain thing, right? The kidneys, even though you may not see them, they have a function to perform in your body. They're, done, they're filtering all the urine and all that, and they're catching the waste, et cetera. They, they, help, they help you to keep healthy. So even although you don't wear glasses... Because your eyes are really good, you got 20-20 vision. 
The head has to do its work. The eyes have to do their work. But the kidneys have to do their work too. So there are different kinds of service. And this is the point. Because everybody trying to be kidneys. No, 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 no. Everybody can't be kidneys. Everybody can't be the quarterback. And everybody can't be the pastor. Everybody can't be the soloist. Because there are different kinds of service. And we need all the services to make the thing work properly. That's why it's so important that people who look after the kitchen do their kitchen duties properly. Those who clean the building, they clean the building properly. Those who prepare sermons, prepare properly. Those who lead worship, lead worship properly. Those who minister to the church, minister properly. Those who have the gifts of healing, that they sight out when there's a case, when there's a need for you to activate your gift and bring healing to, to a brother or sister. Those who have this, this gift of interpretation, you have, to, you have to be so present in the body that you need to be able to stand and interpret there's no, like there are those who have the gift of discernment of spirits who, who recognize when a foul spirit is present that a person has to protect all of us to call us as a foul spirit as you enter the tabernacle, as you enter the house of God because each of us have different gifts, different kinds of gifts and different services to perform in the church. Everybody say amen. For instance... We are told in 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 3, prophecy, prophecy is a strengthening, encouraging, and comforting the church. Prophecy, according to the apostle Paul teaching the church in Corinth, those who prophesy edify the church. They strengthen the church. They encourage the church. They strengthen, they build up the church. They prophesy then Paul goes on then, I make the switch. He says, but check this now. He says, but look. He said, that's how prophecy works. He says, however, 1 first, first Corinthians 14 verse 2, anyone who speaks in a tongue does not speak to people, but to God. So again, different service. Speaking to God is not necessarily speaking to the people. Right? One edifies the church. The next one edifies himself. And then finally, let me close. They operate in different settings. That's, that's what the verse is saying. That's what the verse is saying. I want you to listen carefully to the verse. So you, you don't think the Paul, is, Paul is saying the same thing three different ways. He's saying three different things. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of workings, but in all of them and in every one of them, it is the same God at work. So now we say that they are, they operate in different settings. They operate in different settings. Think about it. Peter, in the book of Acts, Acts 18 and verse 21, he meets this man named Simon the sorcerer. And Simon Peter uses the gift of the discernment of spirits. Not just the gift of discernment, but the gift of the discernment of spirits. Peter looked straight at Simon the sorcerer and said, your heart is not right before God. He said in verse 23, Acts 8 and verse 23, I see that you are full of bitterness and captive to sin. Because in this setting... As Peter comes into that location and sees this man pretending the spirit of God activates the gift of the discernment of spirit. And Peter is able to look straight at that my heart and say, your heart is not right with God. You're captive to, to sin and all kinds of vices and bitterness. That's the gift of discernment operating in that setting. In the same chapter, Acts chapter 18, in the same chapter, Philip goes down the Gaza. <laughs> he, sees, he sees this 
Ethiopian um, finance minister right in his chariot. And Peter asked him, do you understand what you're reading? He said, of course not, I don't understand. How can I understand unless someone explains it to me? Acts chapter 8 of verse 31. Ver, ver, verse 35 tells, then Philip began with that very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. Then Philip began with that very same passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. In other words, in this setting, all is Acts chapter 18, but in one setting, Peter is using the gift of the discernment of spirits to call out Simon. And now in another part of the land, Philip himself is being used by God now as the word of wisdom and as the word of knowledge. God is activating that gift in a different setting now so that Philip can begin with that same passage and tell the Ethiopian about the good news about Jesus Christ. So what Paul is proving to the church here is that there are different kinds of gifts. And now we're seeing here, not only are there different kinds of gifts, you know, saying that there are different settings how we will use those gifts. Here's the conclusion then. <laughs> Here's the conclusion. Leave the conclusion with you. And, and this, is what, this is probably what Paul wants to get to the church. See, in conclusion then, since as the people of God, since we are all led by the Spirit, since as the people of God we are led by the Spirit, here's the conclusion. Since you are eager for gifts of the Spirit, try to excel in those gifts that build up the church. 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 12. All of us have been gifted. The text that we're using today tells us that we all have different kinds of gifts, different kinds of service, and then different kinds of working. But Paul says, but since you desire spiritual gifts, desire those gifts that build up and that edify the body of Christ. Amen? Amen. Here we all are, all gifted, all gifted by the Spirit. All of us, all of us that make it the body of Christ, all of us are all gifted by the same Spirit. Different gifts, different kinds of gifts, different kinds of service, but all from the same God, the same Lord, the same God. May God bless us as we exercise our giftedness to make the church stronger and all that she should be. Amen? Amen. Father, I pray today over your people. Hallelujah. I pray today, God, that you would activate these gifts that are laying dormant in the name of Jesus. Your word tells us that you've called all of us and you've given each of us a gift, at least one gift. And you've given us these gifts, Lord, so that we can make for the common good of the church I pray today in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that right now that you would turn on and activate these gifts even now in the name of Jesus. Make us the church that you want us to be, God, as you raise up each man and each woman to walk in the area of giftedness, in the area of service, Lord. I pray this today over your church in the name of Jesus Christ with thanksgiving. And everybody say... Amen. Praise the Lord. Please stand and join us. Mm -hmm.